Hello everyone and welcome back to the third tutorial of this video series in which we are learning how to use the Manum Python animations library and for this video we're going to be discussing the configuration of the Manum library and how to adjust the configuration settings inside of the Manum library so that we can manipulate and do everything that we need to do. Okay so over here I am in a Jupyter notebook environment and I would just like to show you my directory at this point. I only have this Jupyter notebook file and then I have some other stuff in there which are not necessarily a part of this tutorial but this file over here is what we're going to be working on inside of the browser okay so I'm just going to run that and then I'm going to import everything from Manum okay and so that's going to give us the version of Manum that we are currently using okay and so first thing we're going to do is we're going to start with getting familiar with some of the help options in the Manum library by running the command percentage symbol followed by manum and then double dash help that'll produce all the available options for getting yourself familiar with using the documentation and the commands and all the flags that you would like to use when rendering your videos okay another thing that we sometimes use quite often is the render help options so just to run percentage symbol manum render followed by double dash help that produces all the available flags for using the, the rendering tool inside of Manum okay and so we're gonna look at some of this and we're also gonna look at the configuration files itself so what this configuration files allows us to do is to change some of the output settings etc so over here I have a short piece of code which I'm gonna run as a, a magic cell command okay that's double percentage symbol Manum followed by the flag dash qm for quality medium and then i'm going to run this class latex which is defined just below it okay which takes as argument scene well i'm not so focused on what this code is going to do because we're still going to be discussing a lot of the manum syntax and so on and most of the syntax is really just python syntax so in any ways it's just a, a bit of it is it's like dialect to be honest with you so I'm not really going to go into that in this tutorial what I really want us to look at is adjusting the configuration for the Manum library to make our videos do so, sort of certain things and to manipulate our operating system and our Jupyter notebook working environment and our Manum environment so that our workflow is much better than than what you may have seen on certain introductory tutorials etc so this short piece of code here is just going to produce a short video and what you will see is that we get an output info okay and then it tells us it's writing this equation to a tick file all right and it's continuing to do that until it then displays this rendering bar and then it puts out a video inside of Jupyter Notebook which plays over and over okay so now you would probably want to see where this video is and if you go to your directory you would see that it produced this media folder over here and if I enter there I would see okay well there's some folders for images there's some folder for Jupyter and then there's some tech files and then there's some video files which is where our videos are stored we have partial movies and then we have this LaTeX video over here if I open that it's just gonna show that same video offline or outside of the browser environment okay so one thing that I would like to mention is to change the configuration settings, the verbosity, by typing the command config.verbosity and setting that equals to some other value. And so the, there are other values available, but I'm just going to suppress that to say warning. And what that will allow us to do is to hide all of the previous information that was printed to the screen while we were rendering the video. And so if I run that, I've changed the configuration settings. And if I run this cell over here, which is the exact same code as the previous video, then it's just going to produce the video rendering bar, but none of the other information is displayed on our console here. So I just get the video. So sometimes that's useful because I don't want to see all the things. If I set this back to info, in other words, if I set config.verbosity equals to info, and I run that same code again, I'm going to get all the information back as expected okay but yeah so I'd like to keep that off 
I don't always want to see all that information when I'm building content. And so, yeah, I've chosen to keep it to a minimal and just produce videos like that inside of the browser and rendering it into my project file media. All right, so let's look a little bit more into detail about altering the configuration file variables. And for that, I'm just going to reset the kernel. Okay, it's just going to kill the kernel so that all our information now is at a loss, basically. And I'm going to have to import everything again from Manum. And I'm going to just set the configuration verbosity to warning so that I don't get all that information. Okay, and I'm going to use the Python OS library to define a directory which is pointing to this exact current directory in which my Python file is located. And then I'm just going to join that with a new folder name, which I call videos. Okay. And then I'm going to just going to print the type as well as the path to the screen so you can see where it's located. Okay. So this is a string, the path variable that I've defined over here, and it's pointing to the directory C users, Frank, desktop, Manum, videos. All right. So here are some of the other configuration settings that we can change, which I'm going to print to the screen so you can see where the, what they all look like. Inside of the Manum configuration file, you will find that the media directory is set to dot forward slash media. Okay, that's just standard for where the media will be located when you run a video and when you render a video and where that video should then be placed. We also have this configuration dot media underscore embed. And that basically just tells us where the Jupyter Notebook sh should go and find the video to display in the browser when we're working inside of Jupyter Notebook. We can also change the video underscore directory variable to, well, this is over here is the default value, which is media directory forward slash videos forward slash module underscore name forward slash quality. Okay. And basically I'm going to change that later on over here to path. Okay, so the next cell, if I run that, I'm actually going to change that to the variable that we've defined over here in cell three, which is my current directory, plus this additional folder of videos. Okay, but it's quite important to understand that these configuration variables that I think are important for you to maintain a really good workflow while building video content. So stuff that you would like to do is, for example, is to change the frame rate also, you would like probably want to change the background color. We can also set the enable GUI to true or false. And we can also specify where it should place partial movies. We can specify where it should place images, text, text directory, etc. Okay, so these are just the default settings. I've actually just gonna fetch them from the configuration file. But once I go and set that equals to a different value, you have to do that in a specific way. But over here, I've already figured that out. And, you know, path is a string variable, so we can actually use that. So config.video underscore directory, I want to set that to my current directory path. And then with that additional video folder over there. So I'm going to change where my videos should be stored. I also want to change where my partial movies will be stored by appending directory with this string value over here, partial underscore movies underscore files forward slash C names. So I didn't change much. I just said that it should point to the specific directory first and then it should go and it shouldn't be inside of the media directory. So I've actually just removed that. So if I define those values as well as the media directory files in the, in the text and the text directory, I also want to change the media directory to this current directory and the media embed to directory plus the Jupyter file. And I want to change my media width to 75% and my frame rate to 25%. And I'm going to enable underscore GUI to true. If I now run this cell over here, which is the exact same code as the previous video, it's going to produce the video inside of the browser as we always expect it to. But at the same time, it's also going to build media files over here. So now we have not only the media directory over here, but we have videos, text, and partial movies, and the Jupyter file outside of the media directory, because we've told it to actually go and place them inside of this directory over here, instead of inside of the media directory. Okay, so we've actually updated the configuration files. Or by setting enable underscore GUI to true, what that has done is that once I run the video, it will automatically open this in the default video player on your system. And so that's really all that does. You can turn that to false if you want to.
So another feature that we can change is the background underscore color. If I set that to white, I've actually just changed the text color to black so that it's visible on our video. Otherwise the video would be white and the text also would be white. You wouldn't be able to see the text. But once I run that, you would then see our video looks a bit different. It's white background and I've changed some of the X's to red. And I've changed the other symbolic values here to black. Okay, I'm just going to set that back by saying background underscore color and change that to black. Then I'm also just going to remove the color for all my text and make that basically the default color again. Just to show you that this was the original video. Looks something like that. Okay, if I play that it looks like this. Okay. Right, so yeah, that's pretty much everything I wanted to say about the configuration file. So next we're going to look at sections. And so this is really cool because what this allows us to do is that we can build whole movies, entire videos based off of sections. And so we just do that by following along the documentation for the Manum library, right? And then you can just define when the section should start. Okay. And so it's referring here inside of the construct method over here, we are referring to dot next parentheses method and just below that I have the code that will play for that section and then the same thing happens again in fact I have four sections over here for the first section you don't need to say that you're defining a section that automatically understands this is a section for the next section we've just specified that self dot next underscore section method okay and then for the third section we have self dot next section etc and then for the first fourth section we have the exact same thing self dot next underscore section with some different words over there and so in, under each section we have different code for displaying different words and different mathematical objects and so when i run that you're just going to see it takes quite a bit of time for each section it's building to produce a compiled video which will be output in my vlc media player here in a bit and it will also show in my browser so i'll just leave it okay so once it's done I'm just going to press the play button. It looks like that. It says this is a circle, fades out, then a circle appears. Then it goes to the next section and it says this is a triangle, and then a triangle will appear. And then it goes to the next section, which writes this is a rectangle, and it shows a rectangle to the screen in blue. And then it goes to the next section and it shows this is a square, and then a square will appear. So that's really not complicated code and it's really not the code that I'm focused on over here. It's mostly about the workflow and then I want you to understand how we're going to use the Manum library to start building videos later. So the code is the easy stuff. It's normally getting used to how to do things within the library and manipulate the library itself so that it can do stuff you needed to do. The code is really just a minor aspect that we're going to be looking at over a long period of time to do different stuff. Okay, so yeah, that was it about the sections, um, but for for the next part, I just want us to see that I can still actually change some configuration settings that has to do with sections. I can tell the Manum library that I want to save the sections, all right, in separate folders or in a separate folder. And we can also specify where we would like to save these sections specifically. In this case, I want to save it in my directory where my Python Jupyter Notebook file is located. And then I want to just add another folder, which is called sections. All right. So by running that, let me just clear the variable path. But by running this cell over here, I'm just going to tell the configuration file where to store my sections. Okay. And then I'm just going to set the GUI to off because I don't want this VLC to pop up every time. All right. And then if I run this code over here, which is the exact same as before, it's going to produce my videos and if I go to my directory here you'll see that I now have a sections folder that if I enter that I get a section for this is a circle which will be finished playing in a bit that's about eight seconds long okay and it doesn't go over it does not go over to the next section automatically the next section is this is a triangle and that's about eight seconds long as well I can go to section number three which is a rectangle, it's that's also eight seconds. And then the last section, which is this is a square and it does not automatically go to the next section. However, it does store the entire 
video inside of your videos directory which is also created earlier and over there you'll see it has a video called sections.mp4 if I play that it's 32 that is 8 times 4 those are four sections all together in one video all right so that's pretty cool that's what's so cool about Manum is that it even breaks up all your code and it puts them into a video format and yeah we're gonna have a lot of fun with this stuff over here all right so this is just the beginning and I hope that this tutorial was quite informative because a lot of this stuff is not so obvious and accessible online yeah it is true that a lot of this is available on the Manimus community page but it's quite a process to try and figure it out for yourself so I think that having having made a video about this is quite useful okay so next I just want to illustrate that we can also change the fonts inside of our animations for this we're just going to import the Manim Pango and then we're just going to list all the fonts by specifying manampango.list underscore fonts parentheses. By running that, you'll see these are your available fonts, all right, that we can use inside of our text object. We can specify the text, and then we can change the color to white. We can change the font size to 80, and then we can also change the font to something inside of this list. I just chose Arial because that's something we all know is normally an actual font type. So yeah, I have Arial over there, and then it just pretty much does the same as our previous video, except that the font will look different. So once this is done rendering, it'll put out to the screen, and we can see how it's actually a bit different. But yeah, as I said, this video is really not about the details of Manum itself. See, this font over here is a bit bigger, then it's still going to print, print the circle, fade out, go to the next section. But this time the font is back to normal, because I didn't specify the font size there shows a triangle next section bigger font oh excuse me green font okay with a rectangle over here we have a no um the larger font for a square i think that was 90 font 90 yeah okay so yeah that's pretty much it for this video i hope that was useful um i'll see you in the next one